How do you add humor to a speech or presentation using the rule of three? Let's dive right in. Uh, so if you do a search, look, on, look for videos, read articles and books, a lot of people like to say use the rule of three as if it's some magic elixir that's going to get you laughs. Well, really, my viewpoint on the rule of three is that it is a structure on how you structure the joke and does not necessarily lend itself to make the joke. Let me give you an example. Uh, one of my favorite examples of all time is from the movie Megamind. Hal tells Roxy that she's living in a fantasy. She's so naive. There is no Easter Bunny. There is no Tooth Fairy. And there is no Queen of, e Queen of England, right? Sorry, I kind of messed up right there. So you're living in a fantasy. You're so naive. And then he gives example one, there is no tooth fairy. Example two, there is no Easter bunny. And then the third one is where the twist happens, right? So fundamentally it is defeating the expectation that the previous two set up. So how do you do this? Well, when I was working with a speaker and the first step I do when working with a speaker is identify where in their speech they missed opportunity. So as we're going through his speech and he's talking about a boat trip he took down the coast of California into Mexico, there is a point in the story where he's talking about weathering the storm and the storm is coming up, his boat's being tossed and he needed to do something about it, right? Tossed, and almost like Gilligan's Island if if, you, if, it, any of, if you're watching and you know who Gilligan's Island is. Anyway, I, I digress. He said, I didn't want my boat to end up on the rocks. Right, and so the reason that's one of the points we look for in a, in the material itself is what words or phrases have an obvious double meaning. All right, so level one to that joke is I didn't want my boat to end up on the rocks because boat on the rocks bad, scotch on the rocks good. Right, maybe a little bit of laugh. Right, so then we need to structure that a little bit better. So the next level to that is I didn't want my boat to end up on the rock, so I did what any captain would do, right? So when you say that, or when he says that, now the audience is leaning in. It's like, what, well, what are you going to do, right? Your boat, storm, what's going on, right? So they lean in, they're listening, and then that's when you drop the punchline. I didn't want my boat to end up on the rocks, so I did what any captain would do. I went to the liquor cabinet. All right, first laugh there because... Boat on the rocks bad, scotch on the rocks good, right? A little bit of laugh, right? But now we can heighten that even more by using a rule of three structure. And that is, I didn't want my boat to end up on the rocks. So I did what any captain would do. I dropped the sail, placed the anchor and went to the liquor cabinet. Boom, joke, right? So example one, example two, example three is the twist. And then you follow it up for a second laugh because boat on the rocks bad, scotch on the rocks good. All right, so how do you do this? Well, anywhere in your speech. So record it, have it transcribed, and then you're looking for those opportunities that you've previously missed. And then you identify them and then you, you write the laugh line. And then as you're writing potential laugh lines, you go, all right, can I, can I give an example using the rule of three? And, and that's the part of this that takes practice. And I'm not going to apologize for it, but if you want to be funny, you're, you're going to have to put in some work. It doesn't just happen. But if you put in the work and you practice, trust me, you will become a funnier you. And I look forward to that happening. All right. Talk to you on the next one.